It is a joy to be here at City Field. I am wearing a much more comfortable uh, cap than last Friday. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, color scheme. It fits much better. Okay. But once again, I get to say something that makes me feel really happy for the people in New York City. It is opening day at City Field. It will soon be opening day for baseball. But today, it's opening day for the people of the city, the people of Queens, to get vaccinated. This site will be for the people of Queens. It will be for folks who take care of us and protect us and serve us as taxi drivers. It will be the place for folks who work in food service, working people, essential workers who have given their all to us during this crisis. And we, now, we need to be there for them. We need to support them and make sure they get vaccinated. But this site is the beginning of something very big. The Mets are doing something crucial today for the people of Queens because I can tell you something simple. The people of Queens love the Mets. They love City Field. This is a place they want to be. When vaccinations are here, people will come here. If you build it, they will come. And we need to show people the vaccination is what will make everyone safe, is what will make our families safe, our communities safe. There's no better place in Queens to do that than here at City Field. Now, this is just a beginning. It's just a beginning. Our focus this year is a recovery for all of us. We need to bring back New York City strong in 2021. Vaccination is the key to our recovery. So we start here at City Field, but we're going to build up starts as a few days a week, then it's going to seven days a week to 24-7. By next week, we'll be able to do 4,000 doses a week at this site. But if we have enough vaccine supply, we will be doing 5,000 doses a day here at City Field. 5,000 doses a day, 35,000 doses a week. We'll be able to protect tens of thousands of people each week here at City Field. And I want to tell you, as I was walking around talking to some of the people who have been vaccinated, the relief they felt, the hope they felt, finally getting vaccinated, they were so appreciative to all the good people here doing this important work. And I want to thank our colleagues from Health and Hospitals, Dr. Katz, Dr. Long, all of your team, Annabelle Palma, the Chief Equity Officer, thank you for what you're doing here at City Field. You're making a huge difference for everyone. Health and hospitals have been heroes throughout this crisis and are doing so much good here. I want to thank the elected officials are here. You're going to hear from the Congress member in a moment. But I want to thank as well the Queens Borough President Donovan Richards, State Senator Jessica Ramos, Council Member Francisco Moya. All of them have been wonderful in supporting this effort. And they're going to help to get more and more people, including from the communities very nearby. Jessica represents some of the hardest hit communities in all of Queens that are very nearby to City Field. And we want to see those folks who bore the brunt of the coronavirus come here to get vaccinated. We are also joined by two of the most distinguished dignitaries in all of New York City. It is an honor to be here with Mr. and Mrs. Met. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Talk about celebrities. <laughs> And I have a special honor of introducing someone who is doing so much with his efforts to help Queens. When we first talked about helping the people of Queens, he said, yes, I'm ready. And he's providing help to small businesses that need it. When we talked about vaccination, he said, yes, I'm ready. The Mets are ready to be a part of it. He's always there for the people of Queens, and that is refreshing. There's a lot of people that own sports teams, but not every one of them helps the community they're in. So I like to see a team owner who cares about the people of Queens. That's the way it should be. My pleasure to introduce Steve Cohen. Thank you, Mayor, Thank you, Mayor for, for leading this I mean, incredible effort. And uh, the Mets organization is so proud to, to be a part of it. Um, you know, this pandemic's been going on for a long time. And, and so please, come down, sign up, get vaccinated, um, get your life back. 
And so, you know, we'll keep it short and just say, listen, let's get vaccinated. And one other thing, let's go Mets. Did you just coin that phrase now? That was really good. That was very good. Yeah, I'm really impressed. You're an innovator. <laughs> Uh, the Congress member had to leave, but I want you to hear from the borough president to talk about what this means to the people of Queens, to have this amazing site just for the people of Queens so we can reach deep into communities and make sure everyone is safe. Borough president of Queens, Donovan Richards. It's Queens in the house. Yeah. What a big day. What a home run for the people of this borough. And I want to thank Steve Cohen and the New York Mets for stepping up to the plate. You know, this community and community surrounded here, as the mayor alluded to, was the epicenter of the epicenter of this crisis. You know, as we talk about equity and talk about making sure that our neighbors, all 7,000 and plus who've died from this pandemic, have the opportunity to bounce back. It is critical that we have facilities like this in our borough. And I want to say to the mayor, thank you for stepping up and hearing the cries of many of the elected officials from across the borough about the need to make sure that there is equity as we talk about the distribution of this vaccine. Let me also just say to the federal government that this is a matter of life and death for many of the people in our communities the frontline workers, the people who can't stay home through this pandemic need this vaccine. We need you to ramp up supply big, big, big time for us. We're very happy that the Yankees obviously are getting a nice supply, but we need more right here at the House of the Mets and the home of the Mets so that we can make sure that every Queens resident could get vaccinated in this borough. So it is a joy to be here today. Um, let me say it's a very emotional day when we think about people, the workers at Elmhurst Hospital, when we think about people like Priscilla Caro and friends like Jules Taylor from Rosedale. There's one thing about this pandemic. It did not discriminate where, no matter where you were from in this borough. But there are disparities as we talk about who's getting the vaccine. I want to urge my fellow Queens residents those who have trepidation, who are scared to get the vaccine, communities of color who have a history, and we know there's been a history in this country with the experimentation. We remember the Tuskegee experiment, but I want to urge you that you're not, to tell you you're not being experimented on by getting this vaccine. We need you to take this vaccine so that your communities are safe, so that you are safe, so that your families are safe, so that we can get back to some levels of normalcy in this city and in this borough. So to all of you who are taking the vaccine, thank you. We need you to go out there and be ambassadors for us, to go out there and tell your friends and neighbors, I took it, I'm safe, I'm fine, I'm home, and we need you to do it as well. So I want to thank you once again. Thank you to the New York Mets. This is a home run for our borough once again. Thank you. A couple of words in Spanish, and then we'll take a few questions. Hoy es un día histórico para los residentes de Queens y para los taxistas y trabajadores de restaurantes. Este super sitio para vacunar es parte de nuestro compromiso para proteger todas las comunidades de este gran condado. Vamos a seguir luchando para vacunar a todos in nuestra ciudad, en cuantos nos lleguen las dosis que necesitamos. With that, let's take a few questions. Yes. Can you tell us the exact number of doses that are being administered daily here, and if this bulk that the state is going to be getting from the Biden administration will trickle down to New York City? Yes. Right now, I'm going to check with Mitch and Ted. 250. 250 yeah. today. 250 today. That's going to go up to next week. It'll be 4,000 a week. What we want to get to is 5,000 a day, 35,000 a week. Yeah. We get more supply. That's what we'll be able to hit with this facility on a 24-7 basis. 
Yes. Yeah, I'd like to ask you when people can really get an appointment because we have been talking to a lot of people here. Yeah. They are feeling frustrated and even disrespected because they have been trying to get an appointment and there are not any appointment available. Because we don't have enough supply to get the number of appointments we want to. Uh, I want Annabelle Palma to come forward if she's, or she may be over there. She's over here, good, and say, you can say in both English and Spanish, but just right now this is a beginning over the next weeks, there's going to be more and more. People need to keep signing up, whether it's this site or any other site. There will be more vaccine each week. And we're also going to have people out here to help sign people up. But you can't just come here and get walk in. You have to have an appointment in advance. We don't want lines of people. That's not safe. But if people come here, there will be navigators to help them sign up for a future appointment. Buenos días. Este es el primer día. Obviamente tenemos 250 vacunas hoy. Cuando, cuando comencemos a tener más vacunas, vamos a poder vacunar más residentes de la, de, del condado de Queens. En estos momentos se necesitan una cita para poder vacunarse. No tenemos la cantidad de vacunas para poder vacunar a todo el mundo. ¿Cuándo ellos pueden realmente tener la cita? ¿Cuál es la respuesta? Que, que, nos, nos, eh, a través del website que tenemos, Cuando, te, te, cuando las vacunas estén disponibles, los, lo, las citas van a estar disponibles. Nosotros vamos a tener personas del equipo de nosotros en, aquí en la comunidad ayudando a las personas a conseguir esa cita. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me say, yeah. and for everyone, let me say, yeah. for everyone who shows up here, we're going to sign them up for an appointment, but people cannot, again, really important for folks to understand this is true at Yankee Stadium, too. You can't show up and walk in and get an appointment. You can get a future appointment, and we'll have people starting right now, and Annabel Palma will lead the effort with the group of people over here right now, uh, in English, Spanish, whatever language they speak, to sign them up for an appointment. But we've got to get more supply from the federal government and the state government. This is the key point. New York City deserves more supply. We could be doing half a million people a week if we had the supply. A few more. Yes. Mayor, how much of a say do you have in how much to expand eligibility and do you think it was wise to expand eligibility on Monday this coming Monday to so many more people including myself now I have asthma I can get it when there are people here this morning that showed up 70 years of age right. that have been struggling to get an appointment do you think it was wise to increase eligibility? there has to be really clear verification proof that someone has a serious condition I have asthma too but it's not serious asthma there's no way in the world I should be given priority. But someone who has very serious asthma is in danger right now. Someone who has heart disease is in danger right now. It's absolutely right to say there are people who need it desperately, but we have to get proof to make sure those are the folks who really deserve it. Just a few more, yes. No, not at all. Thank you, man. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, second, talk about, though, the, the announcement was a month ago, and now we have the opening, uh, as opposed to, say, Yankee Stadium, which happened in about two and a half weeks. What does it say about the importance, uh, the presence of state support to make a me uh, mega site happen and operate fully? It says we've got to change the approach. Uh, the city of New York, eight and a half million people. We would be the 12th largest state in the nation by population. We've got to stop this game of not knowing how much supply we're going to have. We need a direct allotment of supply that we can depend on. Uh, mayors all over the country are saying this too. Uh, we're, we're not getting the supply on a reliable basis. We knew we wanted this to be a super site. We knew it would be the right thing to do to get people in Queens who have been hit so hard by this crisis. We couldn't do it because we don't control our own supply. We need to control our own supply. We need a supply we can depend on. So um, I was speaking to a lot of people today, and they obviously they were saying that they believed they could just come today. Obviously, you're saying they right. couldn't. And they also showed me paperwork believing they had an appointment when it wasn't technically the right. right. And we've got this is always a challenge, and we want to try and educate people. I'm asking everyone in the media to help us. There's no such thing as walk up and get a vaccination anywhere because we do not want long lines. We do not want people congregating together. It's really important that people make appointments. We've been saying this now for weeks and weeks. So I understand people's deep desire to get an appointment. The best way to do it is go online or call that phone number. But if people do show up, we'll have a way to sign them up for the next available future opportunity. Okay, everyone, thanks very much.